Jesus! Oh, 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 I don't... Bush meat. It's one of the most controversial topics in food, period. Bush meat is the meat of wild African animals, hunted or more commonly trapped in local forests for the purpose of human consumption. This industry is believed to be responsible for dwindling animal populations and potential viral outbreaks. Have you guys ever gotten sick from some meat? <laughs> Today, I'm going to a Nigerian bushmeat market, just a few hours outside of Lego City. What kind of bushmeat animals do you have here? Everything. I want to know how it works. Have you ever had snake? No. And why, amidst all potential repercussions, it still goes on today. My intention is not to judge or condemn, but to understand. Are there any animals that are restricted by the government? To walk and eat among the local people and learn about Africa's most infamous food industry. This is bushmeat in Nigeria. This is Oluwo Market. It's been here for too long for people to know how long. Centuries at least. Open for business from early morning to dusk. I expected the vibe here to match that of a hacky vice expose with dark ominous music. But it's not like that at all. The mood here is almost festive, bustling with energy and everyone from traders to customers appear to have a smile on their face. There are snails, a broad selection of seafood, and if you walk far enough, you'll find trading stalls for one of West Africa's biggest wild game industries. But before that, a quick starter course with Miss World Africa, Nyakachi. First of all, Nyakachi, this market has everything. Literally everything. Like? What are the actual names of these? Magots, yes, magots. Oh, that's super appetizing. So I see you have two different kinds of maggots here. What kind of tree do these come from? Okay, so these are the same thing like I would find in Southeast Asia. I've had this in Vietnam before. Hmm. How are you doing, man? Although these seem to be a little bit bigger. These are like roided up. These hit the weight room. The worms are dressed up with salt, pepper, onion, and crawfish seasoning. Boiled, then roasted. Okay, I'm gonna give it a smell first, a little sniff test. I like it. Yeah, this oh, is, I got this a little too close. Oh, sorry. I thought it was cocaine. <laughs> Cheers. It's soft. The skin yeah. of it becomes kind of leathery. Mm -hmm. It tastes like it's been soaking in chili oil. Can I have that one? Thank you. You like this one? I love it. Cool. Do the mega dance. Oh my gosh! These are the biggest I've ever seen! You don't eat the heads! Let's just go for it. Do the mega dance. It's so full of stuff! Oh my god! You know what? It has a nice aftertaste. Mmm! Oh, you don't? You need to spit it up? You need a water? You need some champagne? Yeah, I need water. It's like so leathery and hard to chew through. I definitely like the, the softer one. Now, what kind of person is eating these hard ones? Not bad. Look at that smile. Priceless. As we make our way into the market, the smell of burning animal flesh and singed fur wrap around us, sticking to our clothes and clinging to our hair. What's startling to an outsider like me, and what's just another humdrum day of mundane chores for folks here, starts to slowly come into focus. Vendors, merchants, cooks, preparing the daily fresh catch. Grass cutter, snake, monitor lizard. From the look of it, they've got everything here. Here we are. Yeah. First of all, is this tea? Yes, tea. Oh, I love this kind of tea. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, it smells similar to beer. Meet Sunday, a stall owner 
providing goods to his customers for over 25 years. He's kindly offering to give me a better glimpse of this world. So right now they're smoking some different meats, right? Yes. And there's a few different things on here. It's, it's kind of a potpourri of rare meats. Is that the grass cutter? That's right. Oh, we had a grass cutter yesterday. It's got like plenty of fat in there, not overly lean, so it's like sticky when you chew into it. Mm -hmm. It's like gooey. For you, it's gooey. Mm -hmm. Maybe your piece isn't cooked. What else do you have here? Is this an arm? Monitor lizard, yes. Oh, it's a monitor lizard. Is that snake meat? Yes. Oh, have you ever had snakes? No. Really? Snakes are my worst enemies, like literally. That's the thing I'm scared of the most, that I'm actually terrified. Like, I feel like it's gonna go in my tummy and come back no. and bite But you know me. what, though? After you cut it into pieces, it, it can't do any damage. You don't believe me. You think it might come back <laughs> to life? Of course it can't bite me. Like Terminator 2, it's gonna mold back to life? <laughs> this is python meat, a local favorite. I don't... I don't eat it. Are you scared of snakes? Well, I guess it's not for everyone. The snake has been chopped up into handheld pieces, then smoked over a fire until it's completely dried out. It smells like fish. Yes. All right, let's go for it. Mmm, smoky and a little fishy. Very tough. That's pretty out there, man. I actually like it. You like it? Can I try the skin? Yeah. It's very chewy. Don't take a huge bite. I like snake. See? I've had snake many times. It's my first time in Nigeria though. Oh, okay. Oh, is that part of the okay. coffee pot? What is it? The coffee pot. Oh. Ooh. What constitutes exotic meat around the world isn't exactly clear. Most would say anything outside commonly farm-raised chicken, pork, mutton, or beef. But here, they also farm-raised critters you'd never find on a New York dinner menu. So what about wild game? Is that what makes something exotic? So I'm prefer to eat this one than the grass water. Which one do you think tastes better? I would prefer the grass water. What is the most expensive bush meat that gets sold here? The most, that antelope is very antelope, yes. Personally, I grew up in Minnesota, eating deer meat that had been hunted and never thought anything of it. In Bali, some tribes have religious ceremonies surrounding the slaughter and consumption of porcupine. Porcupine is actually very special for our religion. We offer down to our god. In parts of Indonesia, they don't have a history of agriculture, so they hunt and eat wild boar and rats. Which one is your favorite? Huh? Pick what you like rats. All right, I'm starting to feel better about rats. So what is exotic? And what's just another day in Nigeria's countryside? This is the auction area for all these animals, all this bush meat. She's got a giant monitor lizard here. Oh, geez. So this is generally kind of what's available here. Yes. I mean, what is on this table? So there's a, uh, is that a, this a, is deer. Just a deer? Yeah, yes. These are antelope? Yeah. Are these babies or do they only get that big? No, this is a big one. Oh, that's a big one, it's full size. There's nothing here that'd be on your typical Costco grocery list. And what's this one? Bush cat. Bush cat. Yes. For the price of about five cups of Starbucks coffee, you can pick up something like this. And then there's this one. Bush dog, yeah. A bush dog. Dog, yes. So this is some kind of a wild dog. Yes. This one is being a bush. Can't come outside. OK, so it's not a pet. Yes. Oh, that's a crocodile. So this one's alive still? Yes. Where'd you get it? Beside the bush, just like in some water. Wow, this is something else. The surreal range of available creatures is a shock even to me. Creatures I'd only seen on Animal Planet are right here in front of me, ready for sale to the highest bidder. My understanding is, you know, in Nigeria, you can still get chicken, goat, sheep, cow, all of that you can get pretty easily. Yes. Even though the bush meat is more expensive, people want to buy it. Why is that? Because the taste is very different. Mm. Is it just the taste or is it also like, are there any health benefits or something medicinal about the food? I would buy bush meat for the taste. Okay. Because it's not common. Are there any animals that are restricted by the government? Are there any animals that are off limits? Nearly all the animals here today are not endangered. Regardless, I find it interesting that from what I can see, the idea of endangered isn't really a concept here. With no oversight or government regulation, 
Every day, hunters and trappers go to the seemingly infinite jungle, and every day, they bring back something to sell. This has been happening for generations. For them, it was normal then, and it's normal now. We've been invited to dinner by a local, and I'm not one to refuse such a request. This is Alpha. This is Alpha's place, and it looks like he's having a pretty good time. The arrival of newcomers has sparked excitement in the air, but I'm still questioning what exactly we've been invited to eat. Our main and only course, a timeless Nigerian recipe that can sub out any type of animal protein. Today, the protein happens to be monitor lizard. The meat is put in a well-known local mixture of palm oil, onion, a blend of chili peppers, tomato, and onion. It appears the lizard boils for some time to cook it through and soften up the meat. So, we've been invited for a local treat. Yep. You've cooked up some uh, lizard, right? Yeah, what do you feel is that? Let's try it out. Joining our meal, Deremi, a local producer who's been assisting our production in Nigeria. Also, for those still wondering, the monitor lizard is not an endangered species. This is a local preparation? Yes. Yeah. So is that a preparation you could do with any kind of meat? Yeah. yeah. So any kind of meat someone's pulling from this market, they might cook it this way? Yes. Well, here we're going to eat it with our traditional meal, which is called eba. This is eba, a staple food in Nigeria. It's made of dry, grated cassava that's been mixed with hot water. All right, this is our carbohydrate. Oh, it's so hot. I'm going to give it a dip. Let's cheers. Cheers. Mm. Yeah. The sauce was really good. Fresh, spicy, and just tomatoey. Yeah. Descriptions. This meat's still pretty hot. I didn't dig into that yet. Where do you think they caught this lizard? From the other side of the lake. You think they set up traps over there? Yeah, they do. Okay, so some people are real hunters. Yeah. Probably mostly it's trappers. They definitely have to be a hunter to be able to know how to set the trap uh. and know when to check up if the trap has gotten any game. Meat right. If you leave something in the trap too long, then something else gets your meal. Thank you. Yeah. What piece is this? What do I even get? Are these ribs? Can I just bite off of yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, you could, you could. Oh, uh, there you go, there you go. It doesn't look that hard to bite it. The skin feels a little bit like that snake from before. It's thick and kind of gelatinous, gooey. Yeah, get in there. Mm. That's pretty good. Oh. That's pretty good. It is so spicy, man. That spice just hangs out in the back of my throat. Yeah, but that's how we like our sauce in this part of Nigeria. But I love the flavor, and it's addictive. Like, you gotta satisfy that spice by adding more spice. Yeah. Some of these animals, deep in the forest, they might have diseases. I know it's probably not the most fun topic while we're eating one of them. Is that something people worry about here? Or they feel like they've been fine, they've been healthy, no problem? It's well known now, more than ever, that viral outbreaks can originate from bushmeat species, especially bats, pangolins, and several primates. Regardless of if the animals, if the bushmeat, the game has um, an illness or not, and we believe that the enzymes, the germs, the virus, will not be able to stand um, the heat level or the temperature level at which we cook them. Some of the spices we use in Africa are medicinal, mm -hmm. so we believe that some of those spices cure the sickness. The problem with bushmeat is outbreaks don't happen most of the time. They don't even happen some of the time, which can lull folks into a false sense of security. An interspecies leap by a virus is incredibly rare, but when it happens, the results can be catastrophic. Have you guys ever gotten sick from some meat? Nah, I've not. Nobody eats rare meat here, right? Nah. Even beef? No. Do you eat rare beef? No, we don't. Throughout Africa, that's a common thing. Well, except for when I went to Kenya, I did have a raw blood and raw kidney from a goat. 
Can you help? Is it? Delicious. <laughs> wow. How do you find it? Milky. This is what I love about traveling the world is like you're talking to me about, yeah, there's people down here who eat monkeys once in a while. And I'm like, yeah, across Africa, they're eating the raw kidney from a goat. And you're like, dude, have some limits. Uh, let's respect <laughs> the boundaries. <laughs> respect the boundaries. want to persuade you that what happens here is good or bad. I just want you to understand why. Here and in many parts of Africa, it's been like this since anyone can remember. Like it or not, the bushmeat industry is going to continue until its financial incentives are taken away and until education of its potential repercussions becomes widespread.